on YouTube to ridicule in the comments. Our lady man just doesn't quite seem to get it right at the moment. So are Gordon was, Gordon's was just presentation? Or is the substance a problem too? To decipher such a conundrum, we turn to actor and national treasure, Nicholas Parsons. This is his take of the week. <laughs> I'm sitting in the theatre. I love the theatre. I like to think of myself as a, a man of the theatre. I am an actor who's done lots of different things, but I'm also fascinated by politics. But as an actor, it's the drama of politics, the whole political situation, which I see in different perspective, perhaps, to people who are not in our profession. And the present moment, it couldn't be more dramatic. All kinds of interesting and creative and unbelievable things are happening. In many ways, you could say the present political situation has a certain Shakespearean quality to it. I don't know Gordon Brown personally, but he comes over to me from the times I've seen him on television and heard him on the radio in the theatre of politics as a decent, honest man. In fact, he used a word that he's used frequently when he was Chancellor, probity. I think Gordon Brown is fundamentally a man of probity. In Shakespearean terms, Gordon Brown recently has had to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune. But a lot of this has been of his own making, due, I think, to his lack of ability to empathize with the general public. Take the Gurkha situation. I mean, the general public obviously felt very deeply about these wonderful men who've shown such bravery in fighting for our country in different areas of war over many years. How could you deny them their request, a simple request, to have permanent residency in this country? And poor Gordon, he doesn't exactly get the presentation right, does he? I mean, going on YouTube, it's not really a dignified thing for a prime minister to do. In fact, I was so fascinated watching his performance in this arena of theatre, as you might call it, I don't remember a single word he said. I think the present political situation is so full of drama and intrigue, and also it has its touches of humour, that some years from now a dramatist will write a piece, a, a play, about this particular period in our political history, casting Gordon Brown as a sort of King Lear-type character, who, when everything is too much for him, takes to the hills, supported, of course, by his fool in the play, but in this case by his Prince of Darkness, perhaps, Peter Mandelson. It's an intriguing story. It would certainly capture the public's imagination. Perhaps I should write it myself. From the Hampstead Theatre in North London to our little theatre here in Westminster. Mm. Westminster. Welcome back to this week. Great pleasure to be asked. Great pleasure to be here. Now, you Thank said you. there that Gordon Brown, in your view, was a man of probity. So does his performance matter? Oh, of course it does. I mean, nowadays, surely politicians have to be aware that the media has tremendous influence and they have to be aware of how to put over their message. I mean, you think of Margaret Thatcher. She didn't naturally have those abilities, but she learned. In fact, she employed people to come and help her with her voice production and other things. She studied. She took it very seriously. And, of course, Tony Blair was a natural. Mm. He just was able to flannel out of everything. Oh, well, I have to <laughs> explain the whole thing to you. And he, he gets away with it. But Gordon doesn't have those gifts. Mm. And uh, it's very important, I think. It's true, Michael, isn't it? The presentational skills are now... They may not be sufficient, but they're a necessary set of skills to have if you want to be at the top of politics. Indeed. I, I think people sometimes don't recognise how rare it is to have these gifts. I think Tony Blair really was a great rarity. And what I think is particularly, what pe people perhaps overlook, is the amount of stress that a politician is under, mm. uh, particularly when on the media. You think of the Prime Minister and all the things that are going wrong. If you manage to look relaxed in that situation, if you manage to look as if you're in control, if you manage to make a joke, that is a most exceptional gift. And certainly Tony Blair had that in spades. Absolutely. And it's really not, in a way, so very surprising that Gordon Brown doesn't have it, just because I think it is so very It's unusual. the exception rather than the rule. Absolutely. Even in the A division of politics. Yes. I mean, I mean think of recent prime ministers. You know, John, I, John Major didn't have it. Uh, Gordon Brown doesn't have it. Margaret Thatcher, I think, had something quite different. She had an extraordinary conviction which carried her a very, very long way. Uh, she, she was also, a, she had a remarkable understanding of 
image, literary image. She could understand when a photograph was going to say volumes about her and would carry around the world, you know, standing on top of a tank or cuddling a, a, a calf or whatever. And but, Joanna but, Lumley showed today, I mean, politics oof. is not her national, natural habitat at all, but she showed the conviction, uh, presentation, performance, she is an actress, um, really can carry you through. Oh, my goodness. She obviously, she's mastered the subject, but, I mean, she, I mean, it was an extraordinary. You should do a video of it and show it mm. to people mm. about how to manoeuvre and to trap a minister. Paul Phil Woolers looked like a hunted man. It was terrible. I know. I'd, but give, I'd given him an easy time on the daily politics. <laughs> it was a much tougher time Joanna yeah. Lumley gave it. But, Andrew, can I say, the interesting thing about Joanna, who is an exceptional person, I know, most actors and actresses, in fact, nearly all of them, have great difficulty speaking naturally off the yeah, that's cuff absolutely on, right. on, on serious subjects, particularly. Yes, now, yes. Joanna is a very intelligent girl, but she is not only that, she has great political skills, communicative skills. To get up like that as a non-politician mm. and put over that message showed tremendous acumen and so forth. And quite the reverse of what the politician should acquire. The, the, the Joanna Lumley quality and to be able to put the message over. And not to have it scripted, to, to yes. really having to make it up Absolutely. As, as events I, unfolded. I don't, I don't know which was more impressive, really, her prowess or the minister's cack-handedness. I mean, how <laughs> in a building of this size he managed to get himself trapped like that uh, you know, pinned, uh, we have our ways <laughs> in front of the television camera. When cameras. she came out of the House of Commons after her meeting with Gordon Brown yesterday, and she faced that phalanx of cameras with tremendous assurance. I mean, she's not a politician, and she spoke with such assurance and clarity and yeah. cleverness as well. Well, like, coming back to Gordon Brown, uh, Diane, uh, he's being mocked now, even by his own side. You would have to conclude that the, the mockery is now actually getting in the way of the message. For example, one of the messages that could have come out today was that actually there are some green shoots in the economy. There are some encouraging signs. No, no one's saying that we're over the worst, but the stock exchange is powerful again. Sterling is recovering.